Joining in right now, we've got Pramod Gubbi of Marcellus Investment Managers. He's joining us on the show. Good morning, uh, Pramod. I mean, we're just, next week is going to be uh, the big week. And ahead of that, it looks like it's the calm before the storm, at least for now. But how have you probably calmed client nerves or soothed client nerves with regards to what's going to happen with elections and therefore the market sentiment? Yeah, we've always maintained that uh, for fundamentally strong companies, which is pretty much the bulk of what we invest in, um, you know, elections uh, by and large have become a non-event because uh, I guess in the long run, uh, stock price returns emerge from earnings growth and uh, a lot of these companies have delivered irrespective of whichever political party or irrespective of the uh, policy making regime uh, uh, in, in the country. Of course, you know, you, you can have uh, a little bit of a tailwind uh, coming in because of a little bit of extra policy making, pushing that 6% growth towards 8% growth, which is good for everybody. But uh, I think by and large to generate a 15% return in this country, um, there are a handful of companies for which uh, I think it, it becomes less, less of a, a, a factor in producing those returns. In, in, in fact, in the event of, um, you know, let's say an adverse policy regime, uh, which drags down economic growth, um, more often than not, some of the market leaders, the stronger companies tend to do better, uh, right? Because uh, it's an environment where the me too's tend to fall by the wayside and it's an opportunity for these guys to take market share. And hence their earnings growth, growth tends to remain intact. And on top of that, um, you know, these are the sort of companies or stocks which the market itself will flock towards in case of an adverse uh, reaction in the short term. So their P multiples also sort of get protected on the downside. So as long as you're focused on investing in companies which deliver irrespective of the macro, I think this is by and large a non-event. And, and given our endeavor is to be able to drive consistent earnings growth at the portfolio level, uh, we're directing our uh, clients' attention and energies towards that rather than uh, getting, um, you know, get, getting hassled by the sort of noise that's uh, getting built up. Mm -hmm. and, and mind you, it's, it's not really a calm given, given uh, what's happening in the global markets, uh, be it the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East uh, over the last couple of days, or the trade wars between America and, uh, and China, or the macro numbers that, that are coming out from pretty much every geography in the world. It is a global slowdown. So, uh, I guess the Indian elections dwarfs in the in the in the larger scheme of things. Uh, it's one of many factors to consider. Yeah. The other uh, thing that I want to uh, actually ask you is, prices are a factor of demand and supply. Currently, the demand for a majority of the names are muted ahead of elections. It is also a function of the perceived value that a stock has, and what it can deliver in the future. You're saying that there are those few companies. The market seems to be evading everything that's there in the equity markets right now. Where have you spotted these opportunities? Well, I mean, a couple of things. One is uh, the demand of facing banks is something we hear almost on a daily basis. Yes, I mean, in the short run, you can say that. They, but, but I would separate the, the short term and, and the long term here. The demand supply aspect works in the short term, right? Because we've seen the dynamic where the domestic institutional fund managers are happy to sit on cash. Uh, the cash levels have gone up in perhaps rightly or wrongly in anticipation of whatever uncertainty that's associated with this results. At the same time, given the global liquidity pickup uh, following the Fed, uh, uh, Fed policy in January, you've seen um, significant foreign inflows coming in from February, March, April, although May it's sort of slowed down. And, and those, those flows sort of tend to park themselves into the index stocks, uh, you know, large cap stocks. And you've seen that create that demand supply mismatch across, across the market, right? And that in my view is temporary. I don't think you or I or anybody else in the market can actually base your investment decisions based on flows. Uh, it's, it's pretty much next to impossible to second guess what the other market participant is likely to do. Uh, like they say, you know, in the short run, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's sort of a voting machine, but in the long run, the stock market is a weighing machine. Uh, ultimately, earnings is what will weigh on stock prices. And that remains uh, our trajectory. And if you take uh, investment horizon longer than three years, I think there are still fundamentally strong companies. Uh, we still have the demographics uh, uh, with us in terms of consumption. Yes, we have seen a slowdown of sorts over the last couple of quarters. Part of it is cyclical. Um, I guess there is an element of credit finance consumption. So the perceived is, value of consumption is going down. 
Correct, but I don't think the structural aspect of consumption should be written off uh, just as yet, uh, unless and until we believe that um, you know India will never be able to come out of this consumption only sort of uh, uh, an economic engine. Uh, we're still hoping that whichever government comes into power uh, starts working on the structural reforms required to boost investment cycle, particularly around land and labor reforms. And if we if we manage to get a diversified economy going, I think the demographics will play to your strengths because that will get into a virtuous cycle of job creation, income increases, disposable income, and hence consumption will come back into play. But yeah, if, if the doomsday scenario is that, um, yes, we will never be able to get out uh, of this rut, uh, there's no industrial cycle in view, there are no jobs being created in the country, then I guess the last bastion of, uh, of the economy, which is consumption, should also be written off. Uh, but I think that's that's a bit too far-fetched because uh, mm. we've seen many governments come and go, um, and every government has, you know, generally uh, pushed the policy regime in the positive direction, right? So they've taken on the baton from the previous one. Some have done more than the others, yeah. but I don't think we've seen uh, any of the even the most you know, sort of ramshackle coalition government that came in the late 90s uh, actually came out with a very strong budget and some of the um, seats for either GST were sown during the, those regimes. So I don't think we need to paint a doomsday scenario as far as the uh, policy making regime is concerned. At the same time, no need to be euphoric that XYZ parties come in and, and, and tomorrow will be a beautiful day. Okay, so one final question on this conversation, Pramod. Uh, if indeed a new government, which are the government is, comes and shapes up policy for investment, would, from a market's perspective, consumption-based stocks take a back seat because they right now are looking at some slowdown and if indeed there are policies made for investment and capital growth, then the markets may like to put the money in that bucket because that is relatively undervalued. Well, uh, in a relative sense, yes. Relatively speaking, there might be more money going to um, stocks driven off the investment cycle. Uh, but I think there will generally be more money coming into the market in the first place, both foreign and domestic. So a net-net, you know, more stocks in the market will benefit. But from a longer term perspective, I would still think consumption will emerge out of the, as a winner if the policy regime tilts towards uh, uh, generating an investment cycle. Because like I said, uh, it is demographics which is at the core of it. Uh, if you get the job creation engine all right, uh, that will result in consumption getting back onto, a, uh, onto that virtuous cycle. Okay. From all afraid, we'll have to leave it at that. A, a lot of earning interviews lined up, but appreciate you taking the time out and being with us today. Thanks so much. Thank you.